We have spent three hours, uh, and many of my colleagues on the other side have continued to harp on the theme of expressing concern with FBI agent Peter Strzok and the text messages that were just released yesterday. But I'd like to remind everyone of where we were just a little over a year ago. The FBI was conducting investigations of Hillary Clinton's emails, and leaks occurred routinely. Reports cited anti-Hillary Clinton bias within the FBI as the cause of leaks surrounding the investigation of Secretary Clinton's emails. One current agent even described the FBI as, quote, Trump land. Another agent said that some within the FBI viewed Secretary Clinton as, quote, the Antichrist, and said, quote, the reason why agents are leaking is that they're pro-Trump. Now, these leaks had serious consequences, and they arguably swung the election results in Trump's favor. And I didn't hear any of my colleagues on the other side expressing concern about the FBI's bias last year when this was happening, despite the very real problems we were seeing. I uh, agree with you in your earlier statement that political affiliation is different from bias. I believe I'm quoting you correctly when you say that. And I want to remind my colleagues that people are allowed to have their personal opinions and their political affiliations. For instance, Special Counsel Mueller and former FBI Director James Comey and you are lifelong Republicans. But that is not what is at issue. As much as my colleagues on the other side would like to deflect attention away from the urgency of the Special Counsel's investigation into obstruction of justice and collusion at the highest levels of our government, it is clear to me after listening to three hours of questioning that none of this is about text messages. It is rather a full-fledged, irresponsible, and very dangerous attempt on the other side to attack and undermine Robert Mueller's investigation and the credibility, his credibility, and to lay the groundwork for a desire to fire Robert Mueller or invalidate the results of his investigation acts that I believe would cripple our democracy um, and acts the likes of which we have not seen since Watergate. Let me just warn my Republican colleagues and the American people that history will not judge those acts kindly. And being dragged into a president's personal vendettas or apparent attempts to undermine the very fundamentals of our democracy is something we must resist. And so, Deputy Attorney uh, General Rosenstein, let me just ask you again, in your role overseeing the FBI, is it your sense that the FBI's impartiality is at any risk? It's important to distinguish uh, the reputation of the FBI from the character of the FBI. The reputation obviously is damaged by every incident uh, that comes to public attention, but the character of the FBI is a function of the approximately 37,000 employees, and as I said earlier, uh, I've been very impressed with the character of the agents and employees uh, who I know personally. And do you believe that the FBI as an agency is politically motivated? I don't believe you can characterize any agency, Congressman. We all recognize there can be uh, individuals who do things they shouldn't do, uh, but uh, that's something that we address when it comes to our attention. Deputy Attorney General, what can you do to protect the integrity of Special Counsel Mueller's investigation and the results that it comes out with? Congresswoman, I don't think there's anything special that I need to do. Director Mueller has uh, his mandate. He's conducting his investigation, and I believe he'll continue uh, to conduct it until it's concluded. And let me ask you one more time. You've said this a couple of times, but do you have full faith and confidence in Director Mueller's ability to conduct this investigation? Yes, I do. Thank you. Let me move to election security. On November 15th, when the Attorney General appeared before this committee, I and several of my colleagues asked questions about the Justice Department's actions to ensure the security of our elections. And at the time, the Attorney General said that he had not yet ordered a review of what laws might need to be updated to protect our elections from foreign influence. Has such a review yet been ordered? I can tell you, Congressman, we have a lot of ongoing uh, work relating to uh, protection of elections. I, uh, we'll have enough time to go through it all now, but uh, that is a very high priority for us. We have met with, uh, as the Attorney General and I have met with, Director Ray uh, and uh, some of his experts, and we're going to continue to do everything that we can to ensure that our elections... Thank you, and we'd love to have an update on that. Let me use my last few minutes, uh, last few seconds to ask you about civil rights. Uh, we, I have been very concerned 
that the DOJ is not actively defending civil rights and is instead dismantling critical structures and abandoning tools that for decades have been used by the Department of Justice to protect people from police brutality and discrimination. What is the status of the 18 open reform agreements, five open investigations, and one case in active litigation brought under Section 14141 that is managed by the Department's Civil Rights Division? I regret I don't have personal knowledge of all of those, Congresswoman, but uh, if I may, uh, Yesterday, I attended the annual awards ceremony of the Civil Rights Division, uh, and uh, the Civil Rights Division has uh, a lot of very talented and proud attorneys. Uh, the Attorney General spoke about his deep respect for the work of the Civil Rights Division, and so I'm confident that, that work will go on. I would appreciate just a response to that later when you have a chance. Thank you. I yield back. 